Mysterious zombie virus outbreak on campus, the infected surged towards the survivors like a tide, and the question remained, how could they escape? This story unfolds in a high school called Hyosan in South Korea on a regular rainy night. But what happens on the school rooftop is far from ordinary. Jin Su was being bullied by his classmates, evident from the scars on his wrists that bear witness to the pain he endures. He has considered transferring to end this hellish life, but the bullies won't allow it. At that moment, Jin Su, who was being stepped on the ground, suddenly had blue veins popping on his face. He pushed away his classmate and stood up. Fueled by desperation, Jin Su fought back and charged at his tormentor, only to be dodged and pushed off the rooftop. The classmates on the rooftop watched the fallen Jin Su with indifference. He was soon rushed to the hospital, and the doctors were trying to reach his father, Bayan Chan. Frantically, sneaking into the hospital room, Bayan Chan appeared oddly composed as he saw his heavily injured son lying on the bed. He tried to comfort Jin Su, telling him that things would get better, but these words pierced Jin Su's heart deeply. Then Jin Su plans to go out and fight the bullies. Bayan Chan held his son down and told him not to do anything stupid, but not long after, Jin Su's body began to change. prompting Bayan Chan to grab a Bible and strike him in an attempt to prevent Jin Su from harming others. After Jin Su doesn't move a muscle, Byung Chan sneaks him into a box, intending to take him away before figuring out what to do next. Bayan Chan fell down on the way and Jin Su's arm was exposed in the suitcase. He tried to put his arm back in the suitcase but was grabbed by a hand. No doubt Jin Su came back. The next day, Hyosan High School seemed peaceful as usual students practiced archery, sang songs, and Haiyan Ju, a female student, woke up in the science classroom, curious about the noises from the laboratory. She stumbled upon a cute little white mouse in a box. When she reached out to touch it, the mouse bit her. Feeling ominous, Haiyan Ju attempted to leave but was blocked by Bayan Chan, the school's science teacher. He noticed the bite on her hand and pulled her back into the laboratory. There have been some bad rumors at school in the last few days. The science teacher didn't come to class for a few days because his son had disappeared. And when he came back, he smelled bad, like a rotting corpse. <laughs> And he became very strange. Sometimes he suddenly ran out of the room in the middle of a lesson. This has never happened before. During the night, security guards patrolled the school. <sighs> Unaware that Haiyanju was trapped in the laboratory, the next day, when English teacher Sun Wan noticed Haiyanju's absence, she inquired if anyone had seen her recently. A classmate mentioned seeing her last in the science classroom. After class, Sun Wan went to the science classroom, where she found Bayan Chan coming out of the laboratory. She asked him if he had seen Haiyanju, to which he casually replied that he hadn't. Suddenly, there was a noise from the laboratory, and Bayan Chan hastily explained that it was just the sound of experimental white mice. After Sun Wan leaves, Bayan Chan returns to the lab, where Haiyan Ju is still being held captive, and she's not in the best of shape. However, her condition was deteriorating, as the medication he had administered could only delay the infection but not cure it. Haiyan Ju kept crying out for help, though her voice was weak, expressing her strong desire to survive. But Bayan Chan showed no emotion as he coldly told Haiyan Ju not to cling to hope for life. Shortly afterward, Bayan Chan went to attend his class. In the laboratory, Haiyanju's mutation worsened, and she managed to break free from her restraints. In a disoriented state, she stumbled back into the classroom, terrifying her classmates with her appearance. Sun Wan braced Haiyanju and asked her what happened. Haiyanju weakly revealed that Bayan Chan had imprisoned her in the laboratory. Su Hayak immediately carried Haiyanju to the school clinic, and classmates Anjo and Isaac rushed to help. 
The school doctor took Hai and Ju's temperature and found it was only 29.7 degrees, so he called an ambulance. But strangely, Hyun Ju keeps complaining that she feels hot even though her body temperature is low. <laughs> she even starts biting around and Anjo accidentally gets hurt. But at this point, Hai and Ju hasn't completely lost her mind. She remembers that Bayan Chan gave her an injection. Isaac returned to the classroom, where everyone was curious about the situation. She didn't hide anything and explained the conditions at the school clinic, mentioning that both Hai and Ju and Bayan Chan emitted a foul smell. Upon hearing that An Zhou was injured, Chang San immediately rushed to the school clinic, only to find it empty. Hai and Ju had already been taken away in an ambulance. An Zhou's father, who was an ambulance worker, treated An Zhou's wound and advised her to be safe before leaving for the hospital. Sunwa told An Zhou and Su Hayak not to disclose Hai and Ju's situation for the time being. On their way back to the classroom, An Zhou suddenly confessed his feelings to Su Hayak, but Su Hayak politely rejected her. Su Hayak knew that Chang San had feelings for An Zhou. As they were close friends, Chang San arrived, and An Zhou, feeling dejected, left. Chang San asked Su Hayak about An Zhou's injury, and Su Hayak reassured him that it wasn't serious. Hai and Ju didn't bite An Zhou. She got injured while trying to evade the attack. Meanwhile, Bai An Chan returned to the laboratory and discovered that Hai and Ju was missing. Sun Hua then arrived at the lab and said Hai and Ju had been taken to the hospital. This news alarmed Bai An Chan and he urgently urged them not to take Hai and Ju to the hospital. He stressed the importance of isolating her immediately to prevent a major disaster, but nobody believed him. Bai Yang Chan was taken to the principal's office, but the principal also refused to listen to his explanations. Sun Hua had already called the police. As Bai Yang Chan was about to leave, the police arrived. The officer, Che Ik, was familiar with him. Meanwhile, the school nurse returned to her office, preparing to clean up. When suddenly her arms started hurting, she had been bitten by Hyunju while administering the injection. The virus spread rapidly, and her eyes turned red. The nurse's body temperature dropped to 31.5 degrees Celsius, and her nose started bleeding. At that moment, the bell rang for the end of class, and students went to the cafeteria for lunch. However, the nurse, now infected, was lying on the floor, convulsing. Two students noticed her strange behavior and started filming her with their phones. In the next second, the infected nurse turned like a rabid dog and rushed towards them. The male student was taken aback but felt more amused and it wasn't until the school nurse bit one of them that he realized it wasn't a joke. The bitten student quickly mutated and attacked others in another classroom. Simultaneously, the rooftop witnessed a different scene. Eun Ji was humiliated after GWI Nam bullied her and took inappropriate videos. Feeling utterly hopeless, she contemplated suicide. At this critical moment, a male student tried to persuade Eun Ji, promising to make GWI Nam delete the videos. Although she sensed the boy's affection for her, Eun Ji couldn't stand being with someone associated with GWI Nam's bullying. She requested the boy to stay away from her even after her death hoping not to meet him again in her next life. Just as Eun Ji turned to jump, someone else jumped ahead of her. They were stunned by the scene before them. The spread of the zombie-like plague rapidly engulfed the entire campus, and almost no one survived the places it reached. Sun Hua is about to go up to his classmate to reprimand him, and frightened by the student's appearance, Sun Hua rushes to run away desperately. The disaster came too quickly, leaving no time for preparation. In a flash, the canteen was in complete chaos. Chang San managed to protect An Zhou, and they narrowly escaped through a window. However, outside was no better, with zombies all around. Running would only lead to a quicker death, so the wisest decision was to hide. Chong San, An Zhou, and their classmates returned to the classroom, where a few other students had sought refuge. Immediately after Daesu came to take refuge, Suhayak and Namare also climbed in through the window. 
Bai Yangchan is responsible for how things have turned out. Bai Yangchan has a PhD in cytology. After returning from his studies, he worked as a researcher at a pharmaceutical company, and then quit to become a high school science teacher instead of a professor at a university. Bai Yangchan had been conducting a secret experiment, where he placed cats and mice in the same cage. While most mice cowered in the corner, some would lose their sanity due to extreme fear and ultimately rebel in anger. This led to a significant increase in ketone secretion. Bai Yangchan extracted these hormones, hoping to save mice suffering from trembling due to fear. His own son became his first experimental subject. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned, and his son turned into a monstrous creature, attacking even his mother. Simultaneously, Hai and Ju, who had been taken to the hospital for examination, suddenly regained consciousness, her body folding in a bizarre way. <laughs> Hai and Ju began biting anyone she saw, and the virus quickly spread through the hospital. Meanwhile, the archery team returned from a competition, only to be shocked by the scene on campus. The students hiding in the classroom found a cell phone but couldn't unlock it without the password. The phone's owner was outside, and Chan San tried facial recognition to unlock it, to no avail. Anjo tells Chan San to call the police directly, and to make an emergency call without unlocking the phone soon. The call went through, but when the officer on the other end heard about zombies roaming on campus, they immediately dismissed Chong San as crazy. Soon after, the hospital also called to report zombie sightings, and only then did the police start taking it seriously. Subsequently, one call after another reported zombies at various locations, afraid that the police might consider Chong San's report a prank. Anjo made another call, claiming that there was a fire at the school. However, after waiting for some time, no police officers appeared, and even the emergency line couldn't be reached. The student's mentality gradually collapsed. At that moment, a teacher rushed in and instructed everyone to barricade the door with tables. Isaac realized that the teacher had been bitten, and tensions rose. The teacher quickly explained that it wasn't a bite, but it was a bite mark. Bravely, Isaac stood up and urged the teacher to leave the classroom. As soon as Isaac said that, the teacher's nose started to bleed, and he fell to the floor and started to convulse. <laughs> A few moments later, the teacher bites a female student. Everyone quickly joined forces to deal with the teacher. However, at this moment, the bitten female classmate also started to mutate. <laughs> the classroom was no longer safe, and they had to relocate. The male students led the way, while the female students watched from behind. They used door panels to fend off the zombies as they slowly moved forward. The entire teaching building was filled with zombies, leaving them with nowhere to run. <laughs> Suhayak stayed behind to hold them off. The rest of the group was blocked at the entrance to the science classroom. They smashed the lock and took temporary shelter inside. Unfortunately, Anjo accidentally dropped the only phone outside, and it was impossible to retrieve it now. Just as they sighed with relief, zombies started climbing in through the windows. The group quickly stacked tables to block them. The immediate crisis was averted. Anjo suddenly noticed that Suhayak was missing. Everyone was so focused on escaping that they hadn't noticed Suhayak. They weren't the only ones who survived. 
The two students on the rooftop didn't know whether to be happy or sad when they looked at the zombies below them. In the cafeteria, a few survivors were in a dangerous situation, the zombies were right beside them, and the female student was crying in fear. The school bully, GWI Nam, heartlessly kicked her out, leaving her to become the zombie's prey. In the girls' restroom, there were three survivors, the straightforward Mi Jean, the cowardly Jun Song, the unwell Ha Lim, who Mi Jean discovered had a wound on her shoulder, so she locked her up. As long as she didn't mutate, they were still friends, but if they mutated, they would become enemies. Mi Jin's actions angered Ha Lim. Ha Lim threatened that the first person she would kill after turning into a zombie would be Mi Jin. As time passed, Ha Lim began to mutate uncontrollably. Mi Jin prepared for a fight and impaled Ha Lim's head with a stick. At the deadlock, an arrow shot towards Ha Lim, ending the battle. The archer was Hari from the archery team. Then, Sun Wu's voice came through the broadcast, warning that some students had lost their sanity and become extremely aggressive. She advised everyone to hide and wait for rescue. After the broadcast, the campus briefly fell into silence. Isaac was chatting with Anjo when Anjo suddenly noticed that Isaac's hands were cold and her nose was bleeding. Isaac had been bitten while fighting the zombies. <laughs> Although she denied it, her increasingly red eyes revealed the truth. Anjo hugs Isaac reluctantly. Chong Sen quickly pulled Anjo away. Within seconds, Isaac turned into a zombie. <laughs> Chong Sen stood up to protect Anjo, not wanting to harm Isaac, but she was no longer the same person. Isaac crazily charged towards Anjo. Chong Sen immediately pushed Isaac away and she clung to the windowsill with one hand. <laughs> Anjo rushes forward and pulls Isaac in, reminiscing about their time together. She couldn't bear to let go. Na Yun kicked a chair, and Chong San picked it up and smashed it at Isaac. Anjo can only watch with tears in her eyes as her former friend leaves her. <laughs> Chong San tried to console Anjo but couldn't find the right words. After a brief moment of calm, Chong San made a decision to escape from there. He felt that staying put was not a solution, and waiting for rescue was unreliable. To survive, they had to rely on themselves. Chong San got a fire hose from outside the door and prepared to go down from the window to assess the situation. Chong San wanted to take the lead, but when he saw An Zhou, he hesitated and asked Jian Su to go down first. Jian Su made his way to the second floor and met Sun Hua. One by one, Everyone descended and reunited with Sun Hua. In the classroom, only Anjo and Chong San remained. Anjo was still immersed in grief. As the people she liked were dying one by one, Chong San urged Anjo to pull herself together, emphasizing that nothing was more important than staying alive. Time was running out, as zombies were about to break in from outside. Meanwhile, Su Hayak was facing a serious challenge. Several zombies were nearby, and continuing to hide was not a viable option he would eventually be discovered. At this critical moment, Su Hayak escaped from the window and temporarily evaded danger. However, Chong San's situation was not ideal. An Zhou had not yet reached the second floor, and the zombies were quickly closing in. Just as An Zhou reached the second floor, the zombies stormed in. Chong San had no time to go down and was instantly tackled by a zombie, but the fire hose saved his life. Upstairs, Su Hayak witnessed the situation but was unable to help Chong San. Suddenly a zombie appeared on Su Hayak's head. The relentless zombie lunged at Su Hayak. Su Hayak had no choice but to leap, grabbing the fire hose and hanging in midair with Chong San. <sighs> They carefully descended together and finally joined the rest on the second floor. However, before the others entered the room, Nayeon yelled to close the window. Jian Su couldn't stand Nayeon's attitude and argued with her, leading to an argument between them. Nayeon's words were extremely harsh, and Jian Su couldn't hold back and accidentally pushed her down. Sunwa hurriedly intervened, asking them to apologize to each other. In anger, Sunwa scolded them 
reminding them that they didn't even have time to deal with zombies. Yet they were wasting time arguing. As everyone opened the computer to check the news outside, they were all focused on the screen when suddenly the window glass shattered from the impact of the fire hose. Chong San went to check, and to their surprise, a zombie dropped down from above. Chong San immediately grabbed a mop, trying to push the zombie off, but it seemed impossible. Cheyenne Su tried to pry the zombie's fingers open but couldn't make it fall. An enraged Su Hayak picks up a stick and accidentally hits Cheyenne Su in the nose before plunging the stick into the zombie's body. However, the zombie kept trying to climb back up. In desperation, Cheyenne Su picked up the computer's CPU and smashed the zombie down, just as they managed to push the zombie out of the broadcasting room together. In the city center, a large group of zombies were crazily charging forward, and opposite them was a fully armed police force. Wherever the zombies went, they bit people. At this moment, an electric scooter drove up, and the police tried to stop it. This person is none other than Chan San's mother and her destination is the school. Everyone finally breathed a sigh of relief, but the computer was no longer usable. Then, Chai and Su's nose started bleeding, and everyone nervously looked at him. Chai and Su wasn't concerned because he knew it was caused by Su Hayak's stick earlier. However, Nayan looked at Chai and Su in terror, insisting that he had been bitten. After they had reconciled, their conflicts erupted again. The most important thing was that several other students also didn't trust Jian Su. At this moment, Nayan noticed a wound on Jian Su's hand back. This made it even harder for Jian Su to explain, and he felt deeply wronged. He rushed up there to save everyone, and now he's targeting him instead of thanking him. Chong San went forward to inspect Jian Su's wound and found it was just a scrape, not a bite. Everyone came forward to confirm Jian Su's wound, and indeed, it was a scrape. With confirmation, they all believed that Nayan needed to apologize to Jian Su. However, Nayan, being stubborn, refused to apologize and instead accused that she saw a zombie scratch Jian Su's hand. So he must have been infected. Even though most people believed Jian Su was not infected, to dispel any doubts, the teacher suggested Jian Su stay in the recording studio for 10 minutes, which was the best solution at the moment. But Jian Su had his pride and angrily declared that if he had to stay, he would stay for an hour. While the teacher's approach was sensible, it hurt those who had rushed ahead. The actions of Sunwa caused a rift among the group. Chai and Su voluntarily entered the recording studio. They have a short break. After half an hour, Na Yun went in to apologize to Chai and Su under the teacher's advice. However, Na Yun, deep down, looked down on Chai and Su, and instead of apologizing, she humiliated him further. Their conflict escalated once again, as everyone was criticizing Na Yun. Suddenly Jian Su began to bleed from his nose. Everyone was scared and urged Jian Su to leave immediately. Seeing the emotional state of the group, the teacher had no choice but to ask Jian Su to leave. This deeply hurt Jian Su. Feeling disappointed, Jian Su walked towards the door. Just as he was about to open it, the virus inside him erupted completely. After mutating, Chai and Su started attacking everyone. Chong San stood at the window and whistled to get Chai and Su's attention. When Chai and Su pounced, Chong San swiftly dodged, causing Chai and Su to fall heavily. Chong San watched Chai and Su drift away with tears in his eyes. The atmosphere in the broadcasting room dropped to freezing point. At this moment, Namare, who had been silent, suddenly spoke up. She suspected that Nayan was involved in this. Namare had noticed that when Nayan went in to apologize to Jian Su, she wiped the stick with zombie blood using a handkerchief. Then, Nayan used the same handkerchief with zombie blood to wipe Jian Su's wound, leading to his infection. Exposed, Nayan was immediately driven out of the broadcasting room. They all know that once she walks out that door, she might die. Although Nayan had made a mistake, 
Sunwa couldn't bear to see her die outside and decided to go look for Nayun. Outside, Nayun felt hopeless as she walked in the corridor, soon attracting a large group of zombies. Just as the zombies were about to pounce on Nayun, Sunwa appeared and saved her. In the radio room, as Chong San stood at the window looking for Jian Su's figure, someone carefully avoided the zombies and arrived at the school playground. This person was none other than Chong San's mother, who was worried about his safety and came to find him. She saw Jian Su, Chong San's good friend, and approached to ask about Chong San's whereabouts. But instead of answering her, Chong San opened his mouth wide and viciously bit her. <laughs> If the Chong San at the window knew about this, he would probably personally kill Na Yun. In another corner of the school, GW Inam escaped from the cafeteria, but the other areas of the school were not safe either. <laughs> in desperation, GW Inam hid in the principal's office, but there were also several zombies inside. At a critical moment, GW Inam had no choice but to fight them off. On the other hand, at the police station, Jake finally understood the severity of the situation and questioned Byung Chan about why he didn't speak up earlier. Byung Chan smiled and explained that he had been speaking up from the beginning, but no one believed him. Byung Chan revealed the cause of the incident, which started with his son. His son had been suffering from bullying for a long time, and Byung Chan hadn't taken the problem seriously. It wasn't until his son attempted suicide that Byung Chan realized how serious the issue was. Byung Chan wanted to help his son resolve the issue, but the school's higher-ups were just like him in the beginning, not caring about the problem at all. Seeing the bullying worsen, and his son attempting suicide multiple times, Byung Chan knew he couldn't change others, so he tried to change his son instead, but he never wanted things to develop to this extent. Jaek wants Byung Chan to hand over the healing potion and stop making things worse, but Byung Chan doesn't have the cure at all. At this time, the government had ordered the evacuation of the entire city. Just as Jaek prepared to take Byung Chan away, they discovered that the place was already surrounded by zombies. Seeing the zombies madly tearing at others, Byung Chan smiled. When there were only his son and wife as zombies, Byung Chan had considered that this might be the closest existence to human nature, he thought it might be better to accept and coexist with them rather than trying to treat them. Byung Chan had always believed that his idea was right, but the scene before his eyes made him realize that coexistence was just a joke. These people had become complete and utter demons, without hesitation. Byung Chan stepped forward to help fend off the zombies but accidentally got bitten. Jaek prepared to take Byung Chan away but he insisted on staying behind. Byung Chan informed Jaek that his laptop was in the laboratory, and it contained the solution to this problem the only solution. He blocked the swarming zombies, providing Jaek with a chance to escape. <laughs> Byung Chan blocked the swarming zombies, providing Jaek with a chance to escape. Jaek didn't hesitate and immediately left the place. Meanwhile, Byung Chan had also turned into a member of the zombie horde. In the school radio room, the sun had just risen and Chong San looked anxiously out of the window, but there was no sign of the rescue team coming. Meanwhile, the people in the female restroom decided to relocate to the second floor because Hari's brother was there. In the broadcast room, the group didn't make any rash moves as they had too little information. They understood that they needed to grasp the situation outside before deciding their next course of action. On the rooftop, Eun Ji was having an argument with Chul Su. Chul Su forgot to mention something yesterday. GW Inam had set Eun Ji's video to be published at a scheduled time, and if she didn't give him the money on time, he would release the video online at 9 o'clock this morning. Eun Ji deeply regretted not dying yesterday because now her death would be meaningless, and the video would still be released. The only way to salvage her last shred of dignity was to find GW Inam's phone before 9 a.m. Eun Ji went downstairs to find GW Inam's phone, but Chul Su, fearing for his life, stayed on the rooftop. In the school's broadcasting room, Chong San and Su Hayak are about to go to the faculty office to look for their mobile phones, so they can only know what's going on outside if they get their phones. Eun Ji, who had just come down from the rooftop, appeared in front of the school's faculty office. The result is... Ah! 
Outside the principal's office, the principal woke up GW Inam and gave him the car keys to bring the car. GW Inam refused to go and was very arrogant. The headmaster was about to teach GW Inam a lesson, but GW Inam taught him a lesson in return. Anjo's father, Soju, and the congressman were together on the other side, and they had already contacted headquarters for a helicopter to pick them up. They were in the corridor, preparing to block the zombies and buy time for the congressman. However, the door leading to the rooftop was locked, leaving them no choice but to send their team members to open it. Soju bravely held off the zombies alone, until the door was finally opened and the congressman was able to make it to the rooftop. At the school, Chongsan is running away from the zombies. And in a panic, Chongsan breaks into the headmaster's office, only to be shocked by the scene in front of him. The headmaster is kidnapped by GWI Nam. Chongsan takes out his mobile phone to film the incident and advises GWI Nam to be more peaceful, but GWI Nam doesn't care and kills the headmaster in front of Chongsan. Chongsan didn't expect GWI Nam to be so cruel. GWI Nam came to Chongsan and asked him to hand over his mobile phone. Chongsan refused and ran away. GWI Nam chased after him and threw the knife at Chongsan. With a poof, Aoyama was stabbed in the back. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hari fought against the zombies in the hallway, searching for his younger brother. While all this happened, the broadcast room remained peaceful, they saw a helicopter flying by. But it didn't come to rescue them, they realized they could only rely on themselves to face the severe challenge. Soju's side finally waited for the helicopter, and the city below was in ruins, making everyone feel heavy-hearted. The government took the situation seriously and issued two orders, to contain the virus in Shaoshan City and to rescue the uninfected population. On the school side Su Hayak returns to the broadcasting room alone, he's very sorry for not bringing Chongsan back. Meanwhile, Chongsan was desperately trying to escape being chased not only by zombies but also by the terrifying GWI Nam. GWI Nam threw his knife at Chongsan, but fortunately, it hit the handle, not the blade. Chongsan escaped to the library. There are survivors here. <laughs> However, his attempt to climb the bookshelf resulted in him being pushed to the ground by another student. The next moment, he got what he deserved. The student on the bookshelf was instantly drowned in the zombie horde. GWI Nam finally captured Chongsan, intending to kill him. In the nick of time Chongsan smashes GWI Nam with his mobile phone, instantly destroying one of GWI Nam's eyes, and then pushes GWI Nam into the zombie horde. Chongsan looked at GWI Nam. GWI Nam repeats the phrase I'm going to kill you and is drowned by the zombies. Chongsan continues to run for his life. The bookshelf is pushed over by the zombies and floods Chongsan, but the zombies soon find him. <laughs> Chongsan continued to flee and managed to escape the library, only to find that there were still many zombies outside. Fortunately, 
Hari appeared just in time to help Chon San by eliminating a zombie, but Chon San was unaware that he had received assistance. Hari and the others didn't realize there was another survivor. The four of them reached the school clinic, where they found a computer. Meanwhile, Chon San, having escaped from the zombies, quickly checked his phone, hoping to call for help. However, to his surprise, the government had cut off all communication and internet in Shaoshan City to prevent panic among the population. Chon San's phone cannot get through, and Hari's network is also not connecting. Ni Jin also tried the landline but couldn't get a connection. Anjo was not going to sit around and try to find a drone up there. Jun Yang is an expert in this field. So after discussing the plan, Jun Yang and Anjo set off together. In the city, Jaek and his men were wandering around, aiming to get by on Chan's computer which contained the solution to the crisis, but there's still a long way to go to Shaoshan High School, so I'm sure I can't do it on two legs. They decided to find a car, but they ended up taking refuge in Chongsan's family's fried chicken shop, where they encountered another zombie Chongsan's classmate. Before Hyunju escapes from the lab, Hisu goes to the school nurse for help because she's about to give birth. However, when she arrived, she saw Hyunju being taken into the clinic. Hisu silently left the school and found a place to give birth to the baby. Later, Hisu was infected by a zombie, so she left the baby here and ties herself to the door. Jaek and his men didn't know about Hisu's situation and were shocked to see the baby. Luckily, the baby is still alive. In the lab, Jun Yang and Anjo were busy assembling the drone and didn't notice the little white mouse at their feet. Little did they know that the solution to the disaster lay in that room. They packed up their equipment and returned to the radio room. Jun Yang quickly assembled the drone, and they agreed to find Chong San first before seeking help outside. The quartet over at the school nurse's office rested for a while and decided to go to the training ground. As Hari was running low on arrows and had to replenish them, after discussing their strategy, they jumped from the second floor directly to the ground. Just as the drone arrived, the drone and the group passed each other by. Jun Yang continued controlling the drone to search for Chong San and soon found him in the music room. Unfortunately, the drone lacked voice communication to contact Chong San. Now that they had located Chong San, they wanted to check the situation outside. As the drone reached the school gate, a female student burst into tears as her father's car was parked there, and her parents had already turned into zombies. A sense of grief spread throughout the broadcast room. At that moment, the drone got hit by zombies and crashed. On the other side, Soju and the congressman reached the safe zone. The counselor wanted to ask where the command post was, but the military had taken over and didn't give her any face. They asked her to undergo a medical examination first. Due to the large number of people being checked, they were placed in a rudimentary house. This was already the highest treatment, as others were forced to sleep on the floor outside. Soju asked them to go to Hyosan High School, where there are many students, but the military had already sent everyone out, and there were no extra personnel available. Meanwhile, GW Inam woke up in the library. <laughs> GWI Nam woke up in the library. GWI Nam surprisingly didn't die. When he got up, his movement attracted the attention of the zombies, but they didn't attack him. This situation was similar to what happened to Unji before. According to Bayan Chan's explanation, this was a perfect fusion of the virus with humans. They possessed both the abilities of zombies and the intelligence of humans. GWI Nam had become a peculiar semi zombie, and nothing could stop him now. GWI Nam's sole focus was to kill Chong San and avenge his eye. He believed himself to be invincible. Unaware that Unji, who he bullied, had undergone a similar transformation. Chong San is trapped in the music classroom with a pair of eyes staring at him from behind. And the owner of the eyes is Na Yun. Na Yun was saved by Sunwa and hid in the music room. But Sunwa, who came out with her, was nowhere to be found. In the radio studio, female student who lost her parents is ready to die. But she is stopped by everyone. Anjo and female student sit in the recording studio and talk. The female student inadvertently turns on the microphone. 
which gives Namare inspiration, Namare quickly devised a plan to attract zombies using the left speaker to play music. They would then use the right staircase to meet up with Chonsan and head to the rooftop through the middle staircase. The helicopter's been in the air all this time. Going to the rooftop for help is the only way to survive. Before they set off, they broadcasted a message telling Chonsan to stay in place and not wander around. Unbeknownst to them, GWI Nam also heard their message while searching for Chonsan. <laughs> Namare started playing the music, and the zombies rushed towards the sound. Countless zombies passed by GWI Nam without attacking him. As they opened the door to the broadcasting room, they encountered a particular zombie who seemed immune to the music. They had no choice but to take risky actions. Daesu led the way, and the others followed. But in the middle of their escape, a classmate accidentally kicked a cop, attracting the zombie's attention, and they had to run away. GWI Nam here arrived late and didn't see the students in the broadcasting room. Suhayak, who was in charge of breaking the back, tripped over a zombie. <laughs> Suddenly, GWI Nam appeared and killed the zombie attacking Suhayak. There used to be some camaraderie between GWI Nam and Suhayak. However, when GWI Nam questioned Suhayak about Chonsan's whereabouts and expressed his intention to kill him, Suhayak refused to answer GWI Nam's questions. Seeing Suhayak protecting Chonsan, GWI Nam no longer showed any mercy and immediately attacked Suhayak with a knife. <laughs> Suhayak was no match for GWI Nam, and it seemed like he was about to die. Suddenly, Namare appeared and saved Suhayak's life. In the fight, Namare was bitten by GWI Nam. Namare's sudden appearance upsets GWI Nam very much. Just as GWI Nam is about to lay his hands on Namare, Suhayak comes barreling in and knocks GWI Nam out of the window. After dealing with GWI Nam, they immediately went to meet up with the main force. On the other side, the four person group rushed to the training ground. Unfortunately, Jun Song accidentally got injured, but luckily it was just a wound from a stick and not a zombie bite. Meanwhile, the main force arrived at the music classroom, where they had just reunited with Chong San, only to discover that Su Hayak had gone missing again. In a hidden compartment of the music room, Na Yun, who was rescued by Sun Hua, was hiding and too afraid to come out. Just as the main force was about to go out to look for Su Hayak, they saw Namare and Su Hayak running towards them, closely followed by a large group of zombies. They quickly retreated back into the music room, once again trapped by the encircling zombies. During their discussion, they noticed the wound on Namare caused by GWI Nam's bite. On the other side, Soju's father couldn't wait passively and wanted to go to the school to save his daughter, but the counselor can't help. And the Special Operations Division, which is responsible for maintaining order, can't do anything about it. If we follow normal procedures, have to quarantine them for at least a month before they can be released. Soju couldn't wait that long so he had to go through an irregular procedure. Soju puts down a special warfare division man and asks the MP to help with the aftermath. A father's request to his mother. Soju and his teammate change into their special forces uniforms and walk outside to find no one in school uniform, which means that the people in the school haven't been rescued yet. Soju's heart was heavy. Inside the school, everyone looked fearfully at Namare, who had been bitten. Suhayak quickly explained that it was not a zombie bite but GWI Nam's bite. If Chong San wasn't there, everyone might have let it go. But Chong San witnessed GWI Nam being bitten by a zombie. Suhayak doesn't believe Chong San because he just talked to GWI Nam and fought with him. How can it be a zombie? Namare is very calm and decisive. Since GWI Nam has been bitten by a zombie, there is a real risk of him becoming a zombie. She decided to leave. 
but Su Hayak stopped her. Namare had saved Su Hayak's life, and he was not the type to forget gratitude. Namare and Su Hayak come to the window, and if Namare turns into a zombie, he will push Namare down himself. However, Chong San was unwilling to compromise. After all, he witnessed GWI Nam being bitten by a zombie. A conflict erupted between Su Hayak and Chong San, and Namare immediately stepped in to stop them. Namare sat on the windowsill and said to everyone that if she mutated into a zombie, she would jump immediately. The key point of the problem lies with GWI Nam. The zombies they encountered before had no rationality and only attacked on instinct. Who would have thought that GWI Nam had become a special being, half human and half zombie? As time passes Namare begins to mutate. She stares aside at Su Hayak with a sudden and intense hunger that she simply can't control. Chong San senses something is wrong and immediately attacks Namare, but is blocked by Su Hayak. On the other side, GWI Nam, who had fallen from upstairs, regained consciousness. The conflict in the music room escalated, with Chong San determined to kill Namare, while Su Hayak was trying to defend her. At a critical moment, Anjo stepped in to stop Chong San. Anjo pointed out that there was no blood on Namare's mouth, proving that she hadn't bitten Su Hayak. Chong San finally calmed down and decided to observe further. Namare admitted she wasn't normal and indeed had an intense desire to bite Su Hayak, which she could barely control. Namare didn't want to trouble everyone and decided to leave. Anjo stops Namare. She analyses that Namare was bitten by GWI Nam. So the key point of the problem is GWI Nam. But Chong San saw GWI Nam being bitten by a zombie, but he didn't see GWI Nam mutate. Su Hayak did talk and fight with GWI Nam. Namare doesn't want to dwell on this issue. The solution is simple. She just leaves. But Anjo doesn't want to lose a friend just like that. At this point Su Hayak picks up a strip of cloth from the ground and ties Namare to him, so that he's the only one who gets hurt if Namare mutates. At Su Hayak and Anjo's insistence, everyone finally agrees. Meanwhile, in the city center, Jayak and Hochul were preparing to set out. They found a small motorcycle near the entrance and planned to use it as transportation. Jayak also brought the baby with them. However, just as they started the motorcycle, a child ran towards them, and Jayak had to carry the child into fried chicken shop to hide. Their plan was once again disrupted. <laughs> The conflict in the music room temporarily ceased, but a new problem troubled everyone. It had been two days without food or water, and they were all on the brink of death. Little did they know that food and water were in the room where Nayeon was hiding. Nayeon was about to come out when he heard them badmouthing her. Hardly anyone outside likes him. She silently locked the door from the inside. Daesu noticed the small compartment, but Nayeon had already locked the door. Daesu desperately banged on the door, causing excitement among the zombies outside due to the noise. He had no choice but to give up. The girl who lost her parents picks up the VCR on the floor and records her last words. The girl's parents died in front of the school, but the police and firefighters didn't show up, and she hopes that the people involved will be severely punished. Other students also started recording videos one after another. On the other side, Soju decided to rescue his daughter. His teammates helped Soju climb the fence. But Soju didn't give him a rope. Soju knew that he might not be able to return and he didn't want to involve his teammates. However, as he descended from the wall, he was spotted by the guards at the entrance. With no other choice, Soju resorted to violence. The sound of gunshots immediately drew attention from others. Soju desperately ran, evading the hail of bullets. He reached a small lake and jumped in without hesitation. But unfortunately, he got shot with an injured body. A long journey ahead and countless zombies around. Can Soju hold on? On the other side, Unji, who had become a half-human, half-zombie, suddenly felt extremely hungry. She grabbed a fish from the fish tank and stuffed it into her mouth, but it didn't satisfy the intense hunger. The man beside her knew that Unji had been bitten by the zombie, so he picked up a kettle and threw it at her. But Unji is unharmed and picks up the fish on the ground and continues to eat it raw. The man freaked out and told Unji to get out. And the next second the man was disemboweled. All of this was heard by Namare. After being bitten, Namare didn't mutate, but she did have a strong desire to bite Su Hayak at the time. However, Su Hayak's voice awakened her. This is the first time Su Hayak calls Namare by her name. And Namare is very happy and gives Su Hayak a sweet kiss. Now, Namare, 
Being a half zombie is extremely sensitive to sounds and can hear things that others cannot. They need to find a way to escape. And music is still their best option since zombies are highly sensitive to sound. Luckily, they are in the music room. Anjo suggested erecting a roadblock in the middle of the classroom and using music to lure the zombies. When the zombies gather, they can escape through the back door. The crowd divides up the work. As manpower was needed to help Anjo untie Namare and Suhayak. Anjo believed that Namare wouldn't harm them. After that, they nervously arranged the classroom. Putting everything that could be used as a barricade together. However, they were all at the back. And no one was there to open the door for the zombies. Chong San volunteered to do it. And Su Hayak jumps out of the barricade without thinking about it. Wanting to go with Chong San, Su Hayak tells Chong San GWI Nam is dead and won't bother him again. Su Hayak pushes Chong San into the barricade. After setting everything up, Su Hayak opened the door abruptly and quickly jumped behind the roadblock. The music wasn't loud enough, so Daesu played to his strengths and started hissing loudly. Others used musical instruments to hit the roadblock with all their strength. The zombies are getting bigger and bigger, and the zombies in the corridor keep coming. They can only hold on, just when they can't hold on any longer. When the zombies finally finish gathering in the building, they quickly escape through the back door. Daesu and Chongsan stayed behind to hold off the zombies. At the critical moment, Chongsan grabs Daesu and runs away, and the barricade behind them is instantly broken by the zombies. Fortunately, everyone managed to escape successfully. On the other side, GWI Nam continued to search for Chong San. On his way, he encountered his former boss, Mian Huan. They were both startled upon seeing each other. Mian Huan calls GWI Nam to hide under the car, but he doesn't do it out of kindness. He wants GWI Nam to attract the zombies. However, Mian Huan didn't know that GWI Nam was immune to the zombies. GWI Nam pretended to comply, but as soon as he stepped out, he dragged Mian Huan out as well. GWI Nam breaks Mian Huan's bones, and Mian Huan is instantly overwhelmed by zombies. GWI Nam heard some commotion from the music room and quickly rushed there, seeking revenge. <laughs> Chong San's group arrives at the top floor, but the door is locked. Chilsu on the rooftop is terrified when he hears a knock on the door and even though he hears someone shouting, he doesn't choose to open the door. Inside the door, the zombies are already chasing after him. The people are desperately fighting with the zombies. Anjo puts the tent cloth on top of the zombies' heads to stop them from advancing. By this time the helicopter had arrived on the roof and the SWAT team took Chulsu's temperature and asked if there was anyone else. Chulsu replies that he's the only one left. After hearing this, the SWAT team took Chulsu to the helicopter and whizzed away. At this point, the people in the building could no longer care less about knocking on the door. Because GWI Nam appeared and his target was Chong San. Just as GWI Nam grabbed Chong San, Namare made his move. <laughs> Namare threw GWI Nam downstairs. <laughs> The door is finally opened by Anjo. They reached the top floor, but the helicopter had already taken off and they couldn't hear their cries for help. The last straw has passed them by. They escaped to the top floor, but the danger wasn't far away. GWI Nam was right behind them. As the door to the top floor is unusually strong, GWI Nam is unable to open it, so he has to find another way out. On the other hand, the bully Dunji walks among the zombies and meets her classmates who had bullied her and have now turned into zombies including the teacher, who she disemboweled. Lung Ji once reacted to a teacher that she was being bullied by her classmates, but the teacher thought it was her own fault. Thinking about this Lung Ji turned around and ran back to the school building to find alcohol and a lighter. 
Unji had become disillusioned with this school. Before the virus broke out Unji said she wanted to burn the school down. And now she has. Looking at the fire in front of her, Unji didn't hesitate to leave. Unji walks out of the school and rides her bike into the distance, on the rooftop. Chansan wonders why GWI Nam is here when he's already dead. Suhaya guesses that GWI Nam can come back from the dead just like the Unji they saw in the faculty office and of course Namare. Chansan is very worried about their current situation, but Suhayak says Namare will never hurt them. They then used items on the roof to put up a distress signal in the hope of being rescued. As night is approaching, they want to make a fire to keep warm, so they use the principle of drilling wood to make fire. But after a few rounds, they never saw a spark. Then Namare took out a lighter from his pocket. The crowd was dumbfounded. Namare doesn't want Suhayak to know that she smokes, but it's not the time to worry about that anymore. On the other hand, in the archery hall, they made a stretcher for Junsong because he was injured and tried to carry him out. But Junsong was too heavy. A horde of zombies are running towards them, so they have no choice but to go back to the room. Junsong feels that he is dragging his teammates down and asks them to go first. But they've been through life and death together. They won't leave Junsong behind. Now they have to make a new sturdy stretcher. When the stretcher is ready, Mi Jean hears the sound of a helicopter on the roof and suggests that they go to the roof for help. After all, there's a better chance of being rescued up there, but the stairs outside can't take Junsong away, and there are still zombies around, so they have to give up on that idea for now. Soju over there was shot in the water and didn't die. Soju comes to the police station to clean up his wound, but he encounters a horde of zombies. Soju barged into the weapons room, took out a gun and loaded it with bullets, then fought his way out of the zombie horde. Soju did not go straight to his daughter's school but searched all the nearby schools to see if there were any survivors. After checking the map, Soju set off again with a gun in his backpack. On the other side, the fried chicken restaurant. Jake and Hochul were preparing to leave the fried chicken restaurant. They wrapped themselves in cardboard to prevent getting bitten by zombies. Once everything was ready, Jake hopped on a small motorcycle, carrying Hochul and two children, Hochul wielded a wooden stick to clear the zombies chasing after them. No matter where they rode, zombies were everywhere. The city had been completely infected, leaving them with no way out. Fortunately, Jayek had a clever idea and turned into a narrow alley. The zombies swarmed into the alley but got trapped, allowing them to finally escape. Just as they felt relieved, they suddenly heard cries for help. A man with a leg injury was trapped on the rooftop. Hochul told Jayek to drive away. But Jayek stopped and handed the baby in his arms to Hochul. Jayek asked Hochul to wait for them below and went to rescue the injured man. Zombies were chasing after him from behind. And Hochul rode the motorcycle to escape, leaving Jayek behind. At this moment, Jayek could only focus on saving the man. He bandaged the man's injured leg. Meanwhile, a large group of zombies had gathered downstairs. They needed to find a way to distract the zombies to leave the rooftop. As Jayek tried to lure the zombies away, a bus approached from a distance. To his surprise, the driver was Ho Chul. He didn't abandon Jayek but had found another mode of transportation. In an instant the car has been surrounded by zombies and Jayek and the injured man jump onto the roof of the car. Ho Chul drove the bus swiftly, escaping the clutches of the zombies. But unexpectedly, they hit a person on the way. To check if the person was infected, Jayek decided to get off the bus and investigate. And it was Unji who was hit by the car. As Jayek was about to take Unji away, a barrage of bullets was fired towards them. It was the military personnel arriving on the scene. Jayek quickly identified himself to the military, not knowing that there was a half-human, half-zombie in their midst. Hochul thought they were finally saved. The military had another infected person, and they intended to use it for vaccine research. The commander ordered the soldier to contact the parents of the infected person to get their consent. Meanwhile, a soldier reported that a congressman was waiting for inspection, and she was under the command of the Ministry of National Defense. Reluctantly, the commander went to meet the congressman and firmly advised them to follow the restrictions. The congressman has only one request to send a plane to Hyosan High School to save the children. Though the commander didn't give a direct answer, he had already taken the matter to heart. There are no helicopters available at the moment because they're all engaged in combat operations. The commander decided to use his special aircraft to inspect the schools in Shaoshan City. The soldier asked if he wanted to visit the Xiaodong because the commander's mother was there. But the commander said he would wait until it was classified as a rescue zone. At the school, Na Yun, 
who was hiding in the music room, comes out and picks up the video camera on the floor and watches the video recorded by her classmates. Nayeon suddenly got up and picked up a bag and started to fill it with food. When Nayeon heard Jiyeon Su's name on the video camera, she froze with tears in her eyes. Nayeon turned around and had a hallucination that Jiyeon Su was beside her. Remembering her classmates' accusations she burst into tears. After Nayeon walked out of the classroom, she was almost chased by Jiyeon Su who turned into a zombie. At a critical moment, Sunwa appeared just in time and saved Nayeon, but Sunwa accidentally got bitten by a zombie. <laughs> to ensure Nayeon's safety, Sunwa locked her inside the music classroom while she stayed outside. The zombies around Sunwa are all Jiyeon Su and Nayeon's eyes. Although Nayeon felt guilty about intentionally hurting Jiyeon Su, her prideful nature prevented her from admitting it. Otherwise, she wouldn't have chosen to leave at that time. Sunwa understands Nayeon very well and knows that she hurt Jiyeon Su out of fear. Sunwa wants Nayeon to survive, help her classmates, and fit in with the group. With these thoughts, Nayeon picked up the food from the floor and walked out of the classroom. This time, she decided to stand up and help her classmates. However, Nayeon unexpectedly encountered GWI Nam outside the classroom. Unaware that GWI Nam had turned into a zombie, Nayeon has no defense against GWI Nam and is bitten by GWI Nam in the next second. Meanwhile, on the rooftop, the group of survivors gathered around a bonfire for a heart to heart conversation. The reserved Chongsan confessed his feelings to Anjo. Anjo couldn't accept it immediately and wanted some time alone to think, so she chose to sit in a corner. Unbeknownst to them, GWI Nam had found a way to get upstairs and was gradually approaching them. Anjo looks at Chong San's back in the distance and doesn't know what to do. Suddenly, a noise caught Anjo's attention, and she looked up to see GWI Nam climbing onto the rooftop. GWI Nam climbed to the top of the building and ran straight to Chong San. GWI Nam pushed Chong San to the ground and GWI Nam tried to blind Chong San with his fingers. Chong San cried out in pain. Su Hayak comes to his aid. And Su Hayak and GWI Nam fight together. But GWI Nam, who is a half zombie, is not that easy to deal with. <laughs> Su Hayak is knocked down in a couple of blows. Then, Namare suddenly transformed and engaged in a fierce fight with GWI Nam. <laughs> but Namare, being a woman, was no match for GWI Nam and was knocked down by GWI Nam. Su Hayak sees this and goes to help Namare, but he is overpowered by GWI Nam. Namare saw the right moment to push Su Hayak off the rooftop. <laughs> Meanwhile, the research facility was accelerating its efforts to identify the virus's type and source. Only then could they develop an antidote, but so far, they had no results. Even more strangely, Every time they conducted tests, the virus structure changed, as if it were evolving. At this time, a soldier reported to the commander that a rescued policeman had some understanding of the virus. Earlier, Byung-chan had told Jake about a computer in his laboratory that contained methods to resist the virus. The commander sends a team to Hyosan High School immediately after receiving the information. In the school, people are sitting around and talking, a helicopter is flying in the distance and they try to attract the rescue team's attention with a fire. The rescue team landed on the rooftop to check the situation and ordered them all to lie down on the ground to check everyone's status. The body temperatures of the students were normal, but when it was Namare's turn, her temperature showed 34 degrees. The rescue team assumed it was just hypothermia and didn't suspect anything. After confirming their safety, the rescue team told the survivors to stay on the rooftop and took them away after the mission. Meanwhile, the four individuals hiding in the training ground also decided to take a chance and head to the top floor for a glimmer of hope. Only heard a bang, the rescue team broke the window and swept the zombies in front of them. Upon hearing the gunfire, other zombies rushed towards the sound, but it didn't hinder the rescue team's actions at all. <laughs> the
The army killed and successfully came to the science room to decode the files in the computer, and after the successful copying of the files, the rescue team withdrew in the same way and transferred the trapped students. At this moment, an unexpected incident occurred in the protection center. The infected Unji meets Chilsu and attacks him as she hates the man who used to bully her. In the end, it took five special forces to subdue Unji. According to experts' judgment, Unji was an asymptomatic carrier of the virus, which meant some infected individuals couldn't be distinguished from normal people, so the commander ordered to abandon the rescue of the survivors to ensure the safety of the people concerned. Upon receiving the order, the rescue team had to put the students who had just boarded the plane back on the ground. It was their closest opportunity to hope, yet they were mercilessly abandoned. The commander even ordered all of them to be killed. It's better to kill a thousand than to spare one, but the lead soldier went soft and didn't carry out the order. The students watched the search and rescue team leave, but there was nothing they could do. At that moment, they truly experienced what it meant to be abandoned by the whole world. Soju escapes from the sanctuary and rushes to the school without stopping to save his daughter. On the way, Soju meets a man whose wife is pregnant and trapped in a car. The woman can't hold on much longer, but Soju can't get away. Soju gives the man food and a shotgun and tells him that a search and rescue team will be there soon, and he hopes he can hold on a little longer. After saying this, Soju was about to leave, but to his surprise, the man pointed the gun at him, forcing Soju to save his wife. But even then Soju didn't stop. In the end, the man didn't shoot. After several tests, it was discovered that the virus in Unji's body appeared intermittently, indicating an evolutionary result. In other words, the virus could be detected when symptoms were visible. But at other times, Unji was indistinguishable from a normal person, and even testing would not reveal whether she was infected. The disease control center concluded that asymptomatic individuals should also be considered as infected. After careful consideration, the commander issued an order to classify all residents in the shelter as asymptomatic carriers and subject them to close monitoring. On the other side, Namare, who was infected, became extremely sensitive to sounds, especially the piercing sound of thunder. Suhayak pulls off the corner of his shirt and uses it as an earplug to help Namare relieve her pain. The thunder was followed by pouring rain, which was undoubtedly life-saving mana for them, who had not had a drink of water for a long time, and the rain has given them renewed hope and they decide to escape from this hellhole. Out the back door of the auditorium were the tennis courts and then across the back of the hill of the living hall. On the other side of the hill was Dongyang City, where they believed they would be safe. Encouraged by Chongsan, the group decided to take a daring chance. They split into pairs to ensure no one would be left behind. Because of the rain, the infected sense of smell and hearing are slowed down. The group of four senses something unusual and decides to head for the back of the mountain and escape to Dongyang City. <sighs> On the Chongsan side, they proceeded cautiously, afraid of alerting the zombies outside. However, on their way, they unexpectedly encountered Chongsan's mother. When Chongsan's mother saw Chongsan, she opened her bloody mouth and jumped at him. Chongsan was devastated witnessing this. In order to ensure the safety of the group, the students could only take action against Chongsan's mother. The noise they made instantly attracted the zombies around them, and they could only evacuate first. Chongsan looked at his mother in front of him and refused to leave. In the end, the crowd could only force him to pull him away. Simultaneously, the other group of four arrived at the scene. On Chongsan's side, as they were running, Hyorian tripped and fell. Jimin wanted to help her, but the approaching zombies from behind made her abandon the idea. Hyorian thought she was going to die for sure, but at the crucial moment, Hari's brother suddenly appeared and saved her life. Hari then skillfully took down the zombies around them with precise shots. At this moment, Jimin, who has escaped from the group, is surrounded by an army of zombies. Chongsan and the others make their way through the woods to the tennis court. Namare realizes something is wrong as soon as they enter and stops to warn them to run away. A bolt of lightning struck, and the crowd saw that a large wave of zombies had gathered at the tennis court, and they hurriedly fled in panic at the sight. At this critical moment, Mi Jin doesn't give up on the injured Junsong and tries to drag him away with her. At this moment, Junsong suddenly jumps off the trolley and fights off the zombies with all his strength to buy them time to escape. Junsong sacrificed his life for the safety of his companions. They managed to escape into the storage room of the tennis court. However, Min Jae got left behind and had to escape the swarm of zombies on his own. Similarly, Ji Min, who had been separated from the main group, 
unfortunately got attacked by zombies and turned into one of them. Bayan Chan's research on the virus revealed that it was constantly changing and evolving, making it impossible to develop a cure. The only solution was to burn the host completely, leaving no trace of the virus. They were investigating Bayan Chan's research records to understand more. Meanwhile, the military learned that the infection had spread to Dongyang City and was considering expanding the quarantine area, which included the place where the students were heading, implying that they were planning to abandon Shaoshan City. After a night, the zombie horde showed no signs of dispersing. Namare could smell the foul stench even through the door. Now that they're trapped here, Daesu takes this opportunity to confess to Hari. Hari is very calm after hearing this. Not only does he not feel moved, but Hari even kicks and punches Daesu. The whole storeroom is filled with the sound of their fights. Seeing a volleyball that fell on the ground, Suhaya came up with a plan. He suggested forming a circle with the carts and all of them huddling inside to defend against the approaching zombies. Everyone agreed to the plan and began to work on it. On the other hand, the researcher followed Bayan Chan's method and developed a virus that was 98% similar to the infected sample. In other words, Bayan Chan's experiments are true. If a person is infected, his heart will stop beating. Only this virus survives in the body and stimulates the infected's physical activity. The infected person they're seeing now is actually a living dead person, but the mutation of the asymptomatic infected person can't be explained yet. Maybe the only solution is to destroy the host. As Byeonchan said, while they were making the preparations, soldiers reported that the infection had spread to Dongyang City, and the military had ordered a lockdown and dispatched troops to suppress the outbreak. On the tennis court, while making props, they found a bag of chocolates. It's past its expiration date, but it's a lifesaver for them. To make sure that everyone can eat it, they pass it around, each taking a small bite. Some had just eaten a short time before and gave the opportunity to others. With everything ready, they rush out of the gate together. Suhayak leads the way, with Hari assisting. After taking out the zombies around them, they quickly form a circle and push the trolley forward. When the zombies hear the noise, they all rush towards them, making it impossible for them to move forward. Faced with the swarming zombies, they had no choice but to deal with them first. During the fight, Mi Jin got accidentally pinned down by a zombie. When Jun Yang sees this, he tries to save her, but he gets bitten by the vampire. Jun Yang looks at his bitten arm for a moment and then jumps out of the safe zone to help them clear the roadblock. And Jun Yang is surrounded by zombies as a result. <laughs> On the other hand, experts analyze that if just one infected person breaks through the defense line, the whole of Seoul will fall in less than a week. So they have to take action as soon as possible. So the commander instructed the tactical team to prepare a battle plan to drop missiles on Shaoshan. The commander doesn't want to do it, but if he doesn't, he'll lose the whole country. <laughs> On the school side, with the help of Jun Yang's sacrifice, they managed to get to the exit, but the gate was locked and they couldn't open it no matter how hard they knocked. If they don't get out soon, they'll be dead. Just then, Soju successfully arrived at the school through a back path. Just as Anjo keeps banging on the door trying to get out in any way he can, the door suddenly opens and the visitor is none other than Soju. The moment she sees her father, Anjo immediately throws herself into his arms. Soju's heart hangs in the air and finally drops. At this moment, not only is Soju searching for them, but there is also GWI Nam, who seems to never die. Soju immediately led them towards the stadium, but a large group of zombies chased after them relentlessly. 
Upon entering the tennis court, they found themselves surrounded by zombies. The tennis court was quickly overrun by the undead. Soju ignited the prepared fireworks to create a diversion, allowing them to escape. But the fireworks soon burned out. In a critical moment, Soju instructed Chonsan to take on Zhou and escape while he used a whistle to attract the zombies' attention, allowing the students to flee quickly. Soju locks himself in the tennis court as he has been bitten by the zombies and all he has to do is to find a way for his daughter to survive. As the zombies swarmed him, Soju's last words were urging his daughter to run. Anjo and the others managed to escape to a building under construction. On the way, Namare suddenly stopped them and quickly led them to the second floor, warning that the workers inside had all mutated. <laughs> Namrera led them to hide on the balcony outside the house by his mutated abilities. The zombies are rampant inside the house and the group outside dare not make any noise. Anjo was saddened by her father's infection, and Chonsan takes her in his arms to comfort her. Infection with the zombie virus seems to be worse than death itself, because the virus turns man into a monster, a bloodthirsty, horrible demon. Meanwhile, GWI Nam located the sports arena following the sound. However, the students had already left leaving only Min Jae behind. The kind-hearted Min Jae doesn't know that GWI Nam is a zombie, and warns GWI Nam of the dangers outside when he's about to leave. GWI Nam suddenly caught the scent of Chon San on Min Jae and questioned him about it, to protect his classmates. Min Jae refused to reveal Chon San's whereabouts, angering GWI Nam. GWI Nam attacked Min Jae and continued to interrogate him about Chon San's location. Min Jae claimed he was with his classmates and didn't know anyone named Chon San. He seized the opportunity to stab GWI Nam in the neck with a sword. To his surprise, GWI Nam remained unharmed. Min Jae runs towards the bow and arrow, but he only shoots one arrow and can't shoot anymore because he's already started to mutate. GWI Nam comes out of the gym and sees the zombies running towards the back of the mountain as if he understands something. At the same time, the military began testing the zombies' tolerance to sound, since they become highly sensitive to sound after turning into zombies. Loud noises could control them to some extent. They found that the zombies had the greatest response to 20 kHz sound waves. The commander decided to install sound wave emitters on drones to attract the zombies. When the zombies gathered at the target locations, they would launch missiles. There were four target points, including Hyosan High School. There are 170,000 people in Shaoshan City, 110,000 have been excluded. 50,000 zombie casualties and 10,000 uninfected or asymptomatic casualties are expected. The commander ordered continuous evacuation broadcasts before launching the missiles. Namare had been hearing a voice in her head, urging her to bite her companion's necks. Not wanting to harm Suhayak, she resorted to biting herself instead. Suhayak looks at the wound on Namare's hand and tells her to bite him next time she has an attack. But Namare can't do it. The crowd was now trapped on the balcony with no chance of escape, but they didn't give up. At this moment, Namare suddenly hears a sound. It's a military broadcast for evacuation. The military warns the infected to leave the designated area to avoid being bombed. The news is a terrible blow to Chong San's group. The military won't give up bombing just because of a few of them. The drones are already in action, and the zombies start following them. leading the zombies to the designated area. Before they can think of a way to deal with the bombing, GWI Nam finds them. GWI Nam stomped on Chongsan and even Suhayak almost fell off when GWI Nam punched him. Luckily, his classmates pulled Suhayak up, but Chongsan wasn't so lucky. He was tortured by GWI Nam and even got bitten. When the drone reaches the airspace, GWI Nam's hearing is suddenly impaired, and Chon San drops GWI Nam with a collision. The drones reach the designated area, and the commander orders the launch of missiles. Chon San, knowing he will mutate because of the bite, 
decides to go out and lure the zombies away so his friends can escape. After Chan san and Anjo kissed goodbye, he wasted no time jumping into the building, screaming about the zombies that attracted. Due to the building not being fully constructed, Chan san stands on the other side and shouts loudly, the zombies, attracted by the sound, all fall down from the building, the companions took this opportunity to escape, the undefeatable GWI Nam finds Chan san again, and the two of them are fighting instantly. <laughs> But Chan San is no match for GWI Nam and GWI Nam beats him up. In order to avenge one glance, GWI Nam pressed Chan San and snapped his eyeballs. At that moment, a missile came up quickly towards them, and the zombies that had already gathered in the playground were instantly blown to ashes. At the last moment, Chan San hugged GWI Nam and disappeared into the fire together. By this time, his companions have already escaped successfully. After the successful launch of several missiles, the commander could not get back to his senses. After all, that was tens of thousands of lives. After a long time, the commander handed over the command to his men and told them to prepare for tomorrow's search. Then he said he was tired and had to go to bed. The commander walked out of the war room and came to the counselor, hoping that the counselor would convey his apologies to the citizens of Hyosan. After completing all of these actions, the commander returned to his room, put on his military uniform, and made a phone call to his wife. Subsequently, he took his own life by shooting himself with a firearm. After all, so many lives had perished under his command, and he felt that he could only appease the spirits of the people of Shaoshan City by sacrificing his own life. At the moment of the commander's death, all the zombies in Shaoshan City were suddenly eradicated. The city becomes eerily quiet, filled with a heavy atmosphere. Jayek ponders the idea that for the majority to survive, is it acceptable to resort to extreme cruelty? Unfortunately, no one can answer this question. The survivors of the school looked at the fire behind them and couldn't find peace in their hearts. After all, their lives were bought with the lives of their friends. They could walk away now, but they can't, because there is still a glimmer of hope in their hearts that there is a miracle, that Chong San is still alive. But hope is just hope. Back in the building, Namare couldn't smell anything human, and all they could do was say goodbye. The group set off again and moved on, but it wasn't long before they realized they were lost. A yellow strip of cloth on a nearby branch seemed to be pointing them in the right direction. They followed the direction of the cloth. Soon, Anjo noticed a flashlight with her father's name on it. It became evident that these cloth strips were intentionally left behind by her father for her. They soon arrived in Dongyang City. But the atmosphere here wasn't too good either. It was a bit scary quiet. Suddenly, Namare stopped in her tracks and saw a large group of zombies rushing towards them. They ran for their lives. The boy in the back falls, which makes them change their minds. They decided that running away wouldn't solve the problem and opted to confront the zombies head on. They grabbed their weapons and got ready to fight. After a short period of calm, a large wave of zombies appeared and they immediately went into battle. The fight was extremely challenging. Hari's brother is torn by the zombies to protect Hari. Seeing that his mutated brother Hari can't do anything, Namare doesn't hesitate to finish him off. Now was not the time to grieve. There were still many zombies on the road. Hari was ready to fight the zombies to the end. But Namare tells Hari not to make a fearless sacrifice. Looking at Hari's bleeding place, the desire to eat blood erupts inside Namare, who hurriedly looks away and tries to restrain himself. As they set off again, 
Namare deliberately walked at the end of the line, the urge to bite was too much to contain, and Namare wanted to eat her friend in front of her, Namare tried to restrain himself and bit himself, but the hunger was still there, soon Suhayak realizes that Namare has fallen behind and Anjo goes back with him to look for him, they are shocked to see Namare eating a zombie corpse, Anjo tries to calm down and calls Namare to come with him, Namare suddenly runs towards Anjo and pushes her down on the ground as if he's going to eat her, Suhayak was unsure of what to do. He didn't want to see his friend die, nor did he want to harm Namare. Anjo gives up her resistance and tries to let Namare release her, but Namare stops at this moment. Her remaining sanity tells her that the person in front of her is a friend. Namare knows she can't stay with her friend anymore and runs away crying. Anjo and Suhayak immediately go after her, but Namare has already disappeared. Anjo and Suhayak followed the brigade onwards and soon reached the control area. Thinking back on all the bits and pieces along the way, and all the friends lost, not one of them smiles. Since they came from the same place as Byungchan, the military asked them to assist in the investigation and conduct interrogations. Anjo's words best represented their feelings at the moment. We won't make any requests of you, and you don't have to ask us to help with the investigation. Following that was a period of calm isolation, unable to stop thinking about his friend. Anjo climbed over the fence every night to see if there was a miracle. That night, a miracle did occur. Anjo saw a fire on the roof of the school. After dawn, Anjo told Suhayak about it. Namare had said that if they were to meet again, they must relight the bonfire. Anjo suspects that Namare lit the fire, so she decides to check it out tonight. Suhayak really wants to go too, but Suhayak apologizes to Anjo first. After all he didn't do anything when Namare jumped on Anjo. Anjo didn't blame Suhayak knowing that she would have made the same choice in his position. Before leaving, Anjo asked Suhayak not to tell anyone about the bonfire because it's dangerous. As night fell Anjo came to the fence and froze. Everyone was there and no one was missing. They climbed over the fence and saw that there was a fire in the direction of the school. They set off immediately. When they passed the place where Chongsan died, Anjo was sad. Back at the school they hadn't seen for a long time. The place was in ruins. They went all the way to the rooftop. There was a fire. But no one was there. Who could have lit it? Then a figure appears. And it's really Namare. Anjo wants to take Namare away. But she can't. There are other students like her. A few ran outside the school and a few stayed. Namare isn't human and can't go back with Anjo and the others. But she's not a monster either. Despite the distance. They were still good friends. Namare suddenly looked into the distance and said. They're coming. And jumped off the rooftop. Everyone looked in the direction where Namare disappeared and recalled her words. That's right. Although a lot of things have changed, one thing remains the same. They'll always be good friends. This is the end of the full story of Zombie Campus. Thank you very much for watching. We're looking forward to the second season.